And now let's bring you the COVID-19 updates from the United States, where U.S. President Donald Trump has called the coronavirus pandemic the worst attack in U.S. history, adding that the fallout from the crisis is much bigger than even the 9-11 tragedy or the Pearl Harbor attacks. President Trump's statement comes as more than 74,000 people have succumbed to the deadly infection in the United States. Where the stock market's at 24,000 and we went through the worst attack we've ever had on our country. This is really the worst attack we've ever had. This is worse than Pearl Harbor. This is worse than the World Trade Center. There's never been an attack like this. Meanwhile, a day after planning to display the coronavirus task force, Trump has said that the task force will continue indefinitely. The U.S. president even exclaimed that he had no idea how popular the task force was. Today, I'd like to... The task force has done a great job, and I had a meeting yesterday. I had a meeting this morning, uh, probably even more importantly. And so we'll be leaving the task force indefinitely. We'll see. You know, at a certain point, that'll end like things end. But we'll be adding some people to the task force, and uh, there'll be uh, more in the neighborhood probably of uh, opening our country up because our country has to get open again, and the people want it to be open. The task force has been key in the administration's response to this outbreak. The task force heads, Dr. Anthony Fauci and Dr. Deborah Birx, have now emerged as important voices amid this pandemic. According to the latest announcement, new members will also be added to this existing task force as the focus now shifts to reopening the U.S. economy. States continue to reopen across the country and a second wave has now become a bigger concern for the United States. Several states in the country are now lifting their stay-at-home restrictions. But New York, the epicenter of the outbreak, continues to remain under a lockdown. It's not a question of do we reopen. It's a question of how we reopen. That's really the question that we have to grapple with and that we're dealing with in New York. Our position in New York is the answer to the question how do we reopen is by following facts and data as opposed to emotion and politics. Meanwhile, for the first time in its 115-year history, New York City deliberately shut down its entire subway system. This unprecedented step was taken to deep clean all the trains and cars in the massive transit system. This move signals a sweeping change in public transport systems around the globe in a post-pandemic world. Meanwhile, two companies, Pfizer and BioNTech, are delivering doses of their experimental coronavirus vaccines for initial human testing in the United States. If the vaccine proves to be effective in trials, it could potentially be ready for distribution by the end of the year. Pfizer is currently awaiting emergency authorization from the Food and Drug Authority and could distribute up to 20 million doses by the end of 2020.